Well, now that we've got this far, what to do next? Well, I know I want to get this all smoothed out because it's only Friday and they're not coming until Monday. It makes sense to go ahead and fix this uh, sheetrock where the backsplash material was. It makes sense to do that now, doesn't it? Before I pull this plywood out, that way if I spill anything, it's going to go on the old plywood. I can scrape it up, sweep it up, whatever. That could be my staging area. No sense pulling the plywood up first and then doing that because then if I drip anything or if I want to scrape anything between coats, it's all going to fall down in the cabinets and I'm going to have to take it out of the cabinets. Does that make sense? So because I've got enough time, I'm going to go ahead and fix these now first. And if you were with me, on one of the other previous episodes, I told you that the best thing to do, see, because these are broken, this has pulled the, the front edge of the sheetrock paper off, right? See, see how loose? Eh. See this paper, it's loose right there. Okay, I gotta clean that stuff off. But if you put sheetrock mud directly on top of that, it's moist and it will bubble, okay? And, um, you know, it's not going to bubble. I mean, it'll bubble if you put regular sheetrock mud. If you put quick set, it's going to bubble to a certain extent. And then when the first coat of quick set, before it dries all the way, you knock it down. And then if you get any raised bits, you scrape that off before you do the next. But I've had some pretty good luck in the past um, getting some, a spray can of sealer, just clear sealer. And then you spray a little bit on there and then it dries pretty quick. It still bubbles to a certain extent, but you'll seal that and maybe put two coats on there and you'll seal it that so then when you put your sheetrock mud and quick set on there, it doesn't bubble as much, okay? But I don't want to go to the store uh, for this little bit, okay? I got, I thought, you know what? That can of sealer is basically sealing this. What if I just took primer or paint, flat paint, and I got some flat ceiling paint left uh, from when I painted the ceilings. And I thought, what if I put that on there and use that as a primer? And I'll paint each one of these little spots. You know, the dark spots. See, these, these here pulled off the paint a little bit, but that's sheetrock mud there, okay? So I can, I can go over that and smooth over on top of that and it won't bubble. So I don't necessarily have to paint where the white bits is. I, I'm going to have to paint there, paint there, paint, paint all the dark brown spots. And then down here, I can, I can hit that too. You know, that's not really going to bubble that much, but when I got the paint out, I, I'll just go ahead and do that. And then I can use that as a sealer. Now, granted, the paint, when you put it on, it's moist, it's wet, right? So I have a feeling when I put the primer on there, it's going to bubble to a certain extent, but it's not going to bubble enough, I don't think, to, to um, have too many issues. It's not like I got that on an entire wall, let's say. It's just a small area, so I can, I can deal with these little bits, right? And when I put the sheetrock mud on, I, I've got some other stuff called Fix-It-All. And in the old days, it used to be called fix-all. And you can use that on walls, and you can use it on floors. And I use it on floor on some floors. If you saw way back, I've already used that fix-it-all here on the flooring before we installed the carpet and where I had gouges and stuff like that. And it worked out really good. So I can put that on here. And that stuff, that stuff dries hard as a rock, and it dries fast. It's almost like a quick-set material. And so when I put that on, um, when it's still wet, I can look and see if it's bubbled in area in, in uh, little bits and pieces, and then I can flatten that. Or if there's still some bubbles before I put the second coat on, I can lightly scrape off the top edge of, of the dips. Boom, 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 boom. You see what I'm saying? And, and then put the second coat on. It should be fine because they're small enough that I can get away with that. Okay, if, if I had a big, huge area, I wouldn't want to do it. Okay, I'd have to, I'd have to uh, uh, do it a different way, I think. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, get this all set up. So I'm going to go around with the putty knife and take off all the loose bits like that and, and with the sheetrock knife and clean that up before I get my paint out. So I think I'm going to do that 
next. Oh, that's funny. I really didn't want to get into that paint, and so I'm Joe Guyvering it, kind of MacGyver. You ever watch that years ago? He always figured something out to fix something and make it turn out good. And kaboom, I used masking tape. I thought, you know, masking tape will stick on here. I pulled, I pulled everything off um, that was loose, and I thought, I'll just put masking tape on there, on the, on the biggest portion of it, and then the other stuff, it'll still stick and everything else, and it will cover that, and I don't think that masking tape is going to come loose. Uh, we'll see, because I've never tried it this way before. And see, I spent a little bit of time cutting masking tape and kind of fashioning it, it, it in there, and there's still enough room around the outside to keep everything tight. I think this is going to work. I really do. I've never, I've never done it this way before, but with that masking tape on there, you can see the, the mud's going to stick here, it's going to stick there, it's going to stick there, it's going to stick there, it's going to, it's going to cover that, and I think this is going to keep it from bubbling, from getting wet. And then the masking tape's not going to pull up because there's so much mud around the outside of the masking tape to keep it straight and float it off. And I'm going to put two coats of that fix-it-all on there. And that stuff dries hard as a rock. I think I'm going to be fine. Okay? Stay tuned and see if it works. Because I'm going to find that. And that's the next thing I'm going to do is mix some of that stuff up and put her on. Hey, sometimes you just got to use what you got, you know? Here's my patching compound. I usually use uh, quick set material, but this is called Fix-It-All. And they used to call it Fix-All years ago, and then they changed it to Fix-It-All. And it comes in a dry, dry condition in a bag, and you can store this bag. I've had this stuff for a long time. I've used it for all kinds of stuff, and uh, I guess I'm going to use it for the walls right there. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't use that. I'm not going to put a whole lot in here. I'm going to, I'm going to start off kind of a little, a little bit. I wouldn't use it to finish off the wall. They say you can, but uh, it dries like quick set, so you can only use it as an underlayment. You know what I mean? And so. I'm here in the garage, and I've got a piece of craft paper down. I don't want to mix it in there and get it all messy on the floor and stuff. Okay, and so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and mix it here. And because it's gonna be underneath where the tile's gonna ultimately go, I'm fine with that. I just have a three inch knife here. You gotta, you gotta be careful putting, putting it in. You put too much, and then it gets real soupy. Um, then you have to add, you know, all you have to do is add more material. But maybe you don't want to use any more. You know, so try to um, figure out how much water, because sometimes. It's dry, and then you put a little bit of water, and you think, son of a gun, it's all wet now. How'd that happen? This is my sheetrock uh, pan. It's just a plastic pan, I, and I got a plastic pan because I wanted to show people, hey, you can use a plastic pan. You don't need a stainless steel pan. I use this to uh, mix up my, uh, my quick set. And this, I've used it for, for mixing up grout and stuff. There, that's it. Well, I'm going to take that inside now, and we're going to stick it up on the wall, okay? Come on, come with me, see how it works. I'm not sure what happened. I was going, and then it went off. Okay, my mud is drying in my pan, but I'm still, I'm still going. Trying to get it all on there. And if I 
if I don't get it all on there before it dries in my pan too much, I can stop here pretty soon. Okay. I don't think I'm going to go on the other wall just yet. I'm just going to, I'm just going to uh, stay right here. I guess I can hit those lower areas. And you'll know, you'll know when the mud's starting to get dry because it's going to be harder to put it on, obviously. <laughs> I'm just trying to hit that, that little line down there. I didn't want to get too particular at first in case, in case it dried on me too quick. Okay. Hey, look at that. I still, it's still wet enough that I can still put it on, okay? And I'm glad I didn't take the plywood off yet. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting almost dry enough where I can't, I can't put much more on. And I'm, I'm pretty much done, aren't I? Okay. I can scrape that out, but now I can kind of go over it to flatten it out if I didn't put enough on or if I put too much on. Okay. You'll be able to do it. And you know what? It hasn't, it hasn't, uh, it hasn't bubbled at all. Look at that. Putting that masking tape on there. I just thought of that today. Just before I was going to get the paint out, I thought, wait a minute. Maybe I can just, maybe I can just put some masking tape on there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. This is, I got it almost good enough to not even have to put a second coat on, you know? Ah, see, I, you can't really, I was trying to dig in right there to get some of it off. There was a slight hump. Ah, I, I'm good. If you, if, if you don't get it exactly how you want it, that's okay. That's okay, you can let it dry and it won't take very long to dry. Okay, then you can go back with your putty knife and scrape off any high bits and, and stuff before we put another coat on there, okay? And see, I'm going to do the same thing, just like that, over here. Alright, I'm going to do this section next. By the time I get this done, I might do this in two phases. Oh, I don't know, we'll, we'll just see how it works. And then I'll come back over here, and this should be almost dry enough to mix up and put a thin little coat on there, and, and I'll, I'll have enough time to lightly scrape it and do all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I'll get you in there close. I, I do not see any of this bubbling up. Now, if I, didn't, if I didn't have that masking tape on there, all of the dark areas would bubble up to a certain extent. Okay? And uh, these are small enough where if I wouldn't even have put masking tape at all, I think it, I think it would have, it, you, you would see ridges and then, and then as the fix it all dries, then you can push those down. And then if you get any ridges that don't push down all the way, then you take your putty knife and, and, and scrape it when it's dry before you put the second coat on. That's how you do that. <laughs> 